morning dear friends and welcome to this mass of wednesday the sixth week of easter into this mass we will be praying for your intentions again pray for the concerns that you will bring to god this morning or this afternoon depending on where you are joining us from today we also pray for all those who are unemployed those who have lost their jobs those who are looking for jobs those whose businesses have um, been stalled at this time that God may be with them and that God may lead them to where his plan guides we also pray for priests who are sick at this time who cannot be um, be with their parishioners Pray and ask that God may bless them with healing and that God may restore them and return them back to their duties. Pray for Miguel who will be having his um, tooth surgery today. We pray for uh, his quick recovery and healing. Also pray for all those who have asked our prayers at this time. Pray for um, John, Margaret and James Lee. Pray for, Francis, um, for John Fernandez. Pray and ask that God may touch them with the grace of his mercy. Please bring your own intentions and let us pray together in this Mass. Our opening hymn will be Morning Has Broken. Morning has broken like the first morning. Love birth has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for the springing, fresh from the In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, we are gathered here on this Wednesday of the sixth week of Easter. We pray and ask God's blessings on us as we worship today. We bring all the intentions we have mentioned and those that we carry in our hearts before the altar of God's throne. Let us now confess our sins and ask his mercy. We we'll also like to offer this mass for people who have birthday anniversaries, wedding anniversaries or other anniversaries of their lives. That God may bless them with many more healthy, joyful, and peaceful years. Lord, for the times we have not been able to handle and manage the truth, we are sorry. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, for the times we have deliberately told lies, we are sorry. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, for the many times we have not had the courage to defend what we know was right, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that as we celebrate in mystery the solemnities of your Son's resurrection, so too we may be worthy to rejoice at his coming with all the saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul, Paul's escorts, had taken him to Athens, 
They came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up at the Areopagus and said, You Athenians, I see that in every respect you are very religious. For as I walk around looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What therefore you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made for us, he made from one, the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth. And he fixed the others, fixed and others, other the seasons and the boundaries of their regions so that people might seek God, even perhaps group for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our very existence. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offsprings. Since therefore we are his offsprings, we are the offsprings of God. We ought not to think that the divinity is like image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by, by human art or imagination. God has overlooked the, the, the times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed. And he has promised confirmation by all, for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, We should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them. But some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysius, the member of the court of Areopagus, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the song is Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his hosts. Alleluia. Let the kings of the earth and all the peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too and maidens, old men and boys. Alleluia. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his majesty above all earth, on heaven and earth. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when the Spirit, when He comes, the Spirit of truth, He will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on His own, but will speak what He hears, and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, because He will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. 
grace to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today I, I would like to um, reflect with you from the Gospel reading and I would also want to draw an inference from the first reading. But before then, I want to just want to wish you a very um, wonderful day and if you're celebrating any day today or anything today, I want to wish you best, you know, in whatever it is you celebrate. And I want to wish you many more happy and healthy and joyful years where you can celebrate with friends and family. I also hope that today will um, be a better day for you and may give you more reason to hope, more reason to believe, more reason to trust that you have got it all together, even though it doesn't feel and sound like that. And I hope that your faith may be stronger every day believing that you are not in this alone because the Lord promised that he would be with us every day. That is my, my wish for you and um, I hope that the spirit of truth may be with you and may guide you too. From the gospel reading today, the Lord Jesus makes a promise to his disciples. Say, the Lord said to his disciples, I have so much to tell you cannot bear it now. So I'm going to send the Spirit of Truth. The Lord calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth. And says He will guide you to all truth. So I just want to focus on that because this is not the first time the Lord has spoken about truth. Earlier on in John's Gospel chapter 14 he had said that he is the way the truth and the life and when he was before Pilate he also brought the whole concept of truth and Pilate was like stunned truth what is that and so that's something I want us to focus on today what does what is the Lord inferring here? What is he communicating here when he promises us not just the spirit, but he qualifies him as a spirit of truth? And he will not lead us to whatever, that he will lead us to the fullness of truth, to the completeness of truth. The presumption here, I believe, is that the Lord is inferring that as believers who believe in his name and who worship the Holy God that we are repositors of truth places where truth is deposited we almost like bands of truth where people come in there and all they can get is truth it's like when you go to the bank all right yeah the bank is a place where money is deposited if you go there, that's where you get money, whether from the ATM or from the cashier. If you go to a grocery store, that's where groceries are deposited for sale. You get That's where you get your groceries. So the Lord is inferring here that you and I are deposits or depositors of truth, depositors of truth, where truth is found, where truth is encountered, where truth um, is spoken. And as I look around the history of our church, and I look around um, basic human interactions, I don't know if that presumption was overestimated or exaggerated. But maybe this was just the Lord um, expressing an expectation that you and I will be the place of truth, where truth is encountered, revealed, and spoken. And, and so, the question I will ask you that I have asked myself is are you sure? Am I sure that I can handle this spirit of truth? Can you handle truth? 
Can you manage truth? Do you feel comfortable speaking truth? Do you feel comfortable hearing truth? Now, this is something that we may not think much of every day, but it's something that we do any number of times. For some people, um, lying is like a hobby. It's, it's so easy. They don't have to think about it. They just do it. It's, and they lie for no reason. And most of these people too are Christians. They are believers. So the, the question you want to ask yourself is what was the Lord saying to me here when he emphasized that he is the truth and he was sending us the spirit of truth who will lead us to complete truth. So he makes a distinction between what people who trust, believe, and follow him will be like. There will be light contrasted from darkness. There will be truth contrasted from lies. And so when you and I abandon truth for lies, I, I believe we abandon the Lord because he says, I am the truth and the life. And here he calls the spirit, the spirit of truth that he will send to us. So, so that's a question that I would in, invite you to reflect on. It's a question I will invite you to think about. The next time you catch yourself lying, the next time you catch yourself being dishonest, the next time you catch yourself not being truthful or less than truthful, just ask yourself, who am I speaking for? Who am I witnessing to? Who am I speaking for? Because scripture also calls the devil a liar. Since he's the father of lies, he's a liar. So, so when the Lord contrasted truth with lies, he means each time we cave into lies, whether we buy those lies or we speak those lies or we defend those lies, that we are witnessing, just as we are witnessing to the father of lies, who is the devil. And then we are betraying the father of truth, or the master of truth, who is Christ and his spirit. So that's something I want to think about. The first thing I want you to think about today, as you go through this day, ask yourself, am I able to handle truth? Whether as speaking it or accepting it. So mo most of the conflicts we have surround or are, are surrounded by truth. Whether the, the truth I was unable to handle or the truth I couldn't speak. So, so think about that. You realize uh, in the first reading, Paul is been addressing the Areopagus. Areopagus would be like the Senate of Athens. And so while he was speaking, they were listening, they, they seemed to be listening to him until he hid a note that did not rhyme with what they know, what they had read, what they had been taught, what they had been made to believe. It, it's not as if they were wrong with what they believed, they just didn't have the fullness of truth. And so when Paul hid the note about the resurrection, you could see the reaction. They were like, there was a commotion in the entire Areopagus. And, and what that said to me is how most of us are never open to embracing new truths. We cannot handle new truths. When, when something is new, something we have not heard before, something we have not believed, something we have even questioned, now, your, our reaction very often is like this. We either switch off, we stop listening, or we call you names. That's not what the Lord, did, the, the Lord did. Go back and check the entire scripture. He would get into um, arguments. He would get into discussions. He would get into um, some kind of debates with people. But he was always wanting to listen to their opinion and will correct it. And, and last Sunday, Paul tells us or told us how 
we must um, listen to. What of Peter tells us how we must listen to and correct others with patience and with decency. So, the next time you are someone says something, maybe an unbeliever says something or questions you about your own faith or says something that you don't know anything about, that's not time to walk away. That's not time to call their names. That's not time to humiliate them. That's time to want to learn from them and see where they're coming from with that. Sometimes that might just expand your own truth. May not, may not diminish your own truth. Might just expand your own truth. So, so dear friends, we pray for greater civility in how we, be, we deal with each other. But especially standing on the foundations of truth. That is the foundations of Christ and his Holy Spirit. I hope that you and I can handle truth. That you and I can handle the spirit that we're praying for. That from tomorrow, we are going to be praying for this Holy Spirit. I hope you and I can handle this spirit of truth. By speaking him out and by hearing him out. It's always I like to end by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. And that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most gracious God, I just want to thank you for everything that you do. For the times we have found it hard to hear your truth. And to hear truth for the times we have found it hard to speak truth and to witness to truth. For the times we it has been easier for us to lie and to be lied to. We ask Almighty God that you help us to repent and to know that our conduct and our actions do matter for truth and for witnessing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for those who have asked our prayers. Pray especially for Miguel who is going for his surgery today. Pray for John Fernandez who is battling coronavirus. Pray for John, for James and for Margaret Lee who are struggling at this time. Pray for Stella Marino who is also battling some back pain. Pray for our priests who are sick at this time. That our good God who is rich in mercy and healing, healing graces may reach out with his hands of healing and touch every one of them and rid them of their pain and help them find recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Pray for those who celebrate anniversaries today. We ask Almighty God that under these circumstances, you may give them a joy that no one else could and that nothing else could and an assurance that they will have many more years to celebrate in the future. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for our researchers who are battling so hard around the world to find therapeutics or to find a vaccine to manage this virus. We ask Almighty God that your spirit, spirit of wisdom, may guide and lead their actions and so help them sooner than later to find an answer through their research. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nurses and our doctors. Pray for all other medics who are working at this time and risking everything to care for our sick, that God may protect them and keep them safe. And pray for those who are sick, especially in critical condition from this coronavirus or other diseases, that God may be with them and that God may speak wellness and healing to their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask God to hear us as we invite and enlist the prayers of our Blessed Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen.
Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, which become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of the men hand become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the God accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the, the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. But on, in this time above all to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are playing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be we may gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring all to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, 
and we praise and glorify you through your son Jesus Christ through him and with him and in him O God Almighty Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit O glory and honor is yours forever and ever Amen let us pray using the words our Lord gave us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. So always from me to you and your loved ones, may the peace of Christ rest with you, abide with you, and remain with you forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be free. In this moment of spiritual communion, let us all invite the Lord personally to our lives. Gracious, most merciful, ever compassionate and present God, we open our hearts everywhere. We open our homes everywhere. We open our lives right now to you. And we beg you to come to us, to be with us. Come especially, dear God, to all your children who are unable to participate physically in this Eucharist. May they feel your God. May they be blessed by you. May their lives be enlivened. May their lives be enlightened. May their lives be strengthened. May their faith be nourished, especially during these very difficult times. These are the favors we ask from you, dear God, and everything else that you know your children need. Please grant in full measure. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, 
defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits that prowl through the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you and to also invite you to join us for um, Ascension Thursday Mass tomorrow at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock um, Eastern Time. Or if you're joining from Nigeria, that will be 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So always I'd like you to end. And by leaving this presence, knowing that you are still the delight of God, and he loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing a song to our blessed mother, Immaculate Mary, thy praises we sing. Immaculate Mary, thy praises we sing, who in now in heaven with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. In heaven the blessed thy glory proclaim, on earth we thy children.